This is the new DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and here's my one week review. Damn, that never gets old. Before we get into my one week experience, let's quickly check out what's new in the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. There is now a larger 1 inch CMOS sensor and this allows for better image quality and improved low light performance. I was truly blown away at how well the sensor coped with nighttime recording. And for those wondering, it's at a constant aperture of f2.0, which is slightly narrower compared to the Osmo Pocket 2 at f1.8. But don't worry because the Osmo Pocket 3 image is way better thanks to the larger sensor. The last thing I want to mention are the shooting modes. You have options such as slow motion which can record up to 4K 120, low light mode for the extra ISO boost, time lapse mode to accentuate motion and 10 bit log recording for preserving the most dynamic range possible. Do note that in vertical mode, the resolution maxes out at 3K because the sensor doesn't actually turn like the Mini 4 Pro. It's just being cropped from the full size of the sensor, similar to what they're doing with the DJI Air 3. This is without a doubt the most eye-catching feature of the Osmo Pocket 3. I really enjoyed the fact that the OLED display can rotate to match the type of content that I'm shooting because it makes framing the shot so much easier. The touchscreen is very accurate and navigating the settings is also very intuitive with swipe motions from all four corners. And yes, it makes for a great fidget toy. DJI being DJI, they've got the stabilization formula perfected. Walking shots are very well handled and I'm not even trying to keep the camera stable. I also did some tests while running and I gotta say the footage still looks great. Now I don't necessarily have to carry a gimbal with me for traveling. There has never been an easier time to be a solo content creator. With ActiveTrack 6.0, you can be sure that you're always in frame. It's like you have a cameraman with you. I use this a lot for vlogging to keep myself centered or wherever I want to appear since it supports dynamic framing. Now I can just focus on experiencing the moment and not constantly looking at the camera to make sure I'm in the shot. The Pocket 3 features three built-in microphones. It's one lesser than the Osmo Pocket 2 but it can surprisingly capture way better audio. In fact, it now supports omnidirectional sound recording, allowing you to record more immersive content. The audio you're hearing right now is directly from the Osmo Pocket 3. As you can tell, it's a pretty noisy environment but I think you can still hear me relatively well, right? And if the environment was quieter, the audio obviously gets better. I'm really happy with how it sounds like but since we're on the topic of audio, here's what the new DJI Mic 2 sounds like. It should be a lot better and most importantly, you can be further away from the camera. Some other features worth quickly mentioning is that the Osmo Pocket 3 now supports fast charging. You can get about 89% charge in just 16 minutes. The battery should get you about 166 minutes of HD footage at 24 frames per second. I don't record in HD, I do vertical 3K 25fps and the battery definitely will not last a day. That's why I always pair it with the battery grip. There's no official numbers for the battery grip but with my shooting style of short bursts here and there, it can definitely last me a full day. So the Osmo Pocket 3 will come in two versions, the standard kit for $519 and the creator combo for $669. I highly recommend you getting the Creator Combo because it comes with so many great accessories. You have the protective cover, carrying bag, handle with quarter inch thread, battery handle, mini tripod, DJI Mic 2, USB-C cable, DJI Mic 2 windscreen, wrist strap, wide angle lens and the Osmo Pocket 3 itself. Alright enough about the features, now let's talk about how it's actually been with the Osmo Pocket 3 over the last few days. As someone who has way too many full frame cameras, there's something very casual and relaxing when using the Osmo Pocket 3. I find myself recording more daily videos and it's just made way easier when the device can shoot good looking and stable shots. As with all DJI gimbals, a triple tap on the joystick will enable selfie mode. On top of that, the audio quality is excellent and that's without bringing the DJI Mic 2 into the picture. With that being said, I'm obviously not getting rid of any of my professional cameras. Each and every one of my cameras has its purpose. And the Osmo Pocket 3 is the camera to capture day-to-day -day life. I especially like using it for travel vlogs, something that I've abandoned ever since I went down the path of cinematic travel reels. Now is the part where we go through some of the pros and cons that are faced using this device. 
starting with the cons so that we can end on a happy note with the pros. Let's start with ergonomics. If you're an average sized adult with average sized hands, you'll probably find the Osmo Pocket 3 a little uncomfortable to operate because the joystick is located all the way at the bottom left of the device. You'll definitely need to use either the quarter inch handle or battery handle for a better grip. Plus, that's the only way to get a quarter inch thread at the bottom to use with a tripod. Now, things are about to get hot. Literally, the Osmo Pocket 3 gets a little warmer than I would like, even when indoors. It's most notable at the base of the device near the DJI logo. I can't imagine how hot it'll get when shooting outdoors. So far, I've not had any overheating warnings, but we'll see how it fares when I take it to the sandy beaches of Philippines in a few weeks' time. Next is the gimbal rotation endpoints. For some reason, I just assume that it can freely turn 360 degrees like my Ronin gimbals, but the Osmo Pocket 3 has a physical limit towards the left side, at about 45 degrees if you're looking from the top. I don't see myself needing 360 degrees turning, but it's good to let you know in case you want to track yourself and run around the camera. Moving on, when switching to selfie mode, the display will mirror the image to make it easier on the eyes. The problem is, there is a noticeable delay when the display mirrors the image. I wish this transition was smoother or less noticeable. The last con I want to touch about is this weird gimbal error that I faced during my second day using it. The gimbal went absolutely nuts and I had no idea what caused it. I tried some troubleshooting steps but in the end, I had to factory reset it to get the gimbal working again. It's only happened once and I'm hoping that it doesn't happen again because resetting the Osmo Pocket 3 means you will lose all your settings and there's also a chance that the gimbal or camera will get damaged. So those are just some of the cons that I faced with the Osmo Pocket 3. None of them are real deal breakers and the best part is, almost all of them can be fixed with a firmware update. Except for the ergonomics, but then again, you have the extension handles that will fix that issue. Now let's move to the pros of the Osmo Pocket 3. First up is an impressively fast boot up time. Nothing is worse than a camera that takes a long time to get started. By the time you hit record, the moment might be gone already. So I'm really glad that the Osmo Pocket 3 can start recording within a few seconds. You can also make it a little quicker by enabling auto recording as soon as the camera starts. Next is the audio quality. I'm truly blown away at how well the built-in microphones are. Usually those microphones are the worst and you need an external microphone which makes the setup unnecessarily big. But with the Osmo Pocket 3, I'm very comfortable with just using the built-in microphones. The new DJI Mic 2 is definitely tempting to use but unless I need the wireless range, I'm just going to use the built-in microphones. Moving on is the USB-C connection. Not only is it for charging, but you can also use it to transfer data and, and use the Osmo Pocket 3 as a webcam. This is such an awesome feature and it works without any extra software. On top of that, you can still use the features of the Osmo Pocket 3 such as tracking while being connected to the computer as a webcam. Last but not least is the DJI Mimo Companion app. It's actually quite useful for remotely controlling the gimbal, changing settings, upgrading the firmware, downloading files, and there's also a live stream function. All right, let's do the outro with the Osmo Pocket 3. Overall, I've had a really great time with this camera. It takes out a lot of the effort needed to get a really nice shot. And that's extremely important so that you can be more present in the moment. By the way, I bought this camera with my own money because I was so excited with the new features. So if you're looking for a compact camera to take around with you every day or when traveling, you might want to consider the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, a full production suite in the palm of your hands. Can you see this? Yes, you can, because I've got the wide angle lens attached. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.